Hello, and welcome to our Surge Experience Online. It is a joy to have you join us today and an honor to share our ministry with you. We pray you will be blessed by the worship, the message, and the ministry. If you are new to Surge, we want to welcome you. Please log on to our website at surgechurch.tv and complete the online connect card that you will find on the main graphic of the homepage. It will be a privilege to connect with you and to be a part of your spiritual growth. As we gather together today, let's join in worship, receive God's word in faith, and stay connected in spirit. Get ready because the Surge Experience starts now. this morning. We need you, Father. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today for who you are because we need you in our lives, Lord. We ask that you'll just immense us and submerge us in your spirit this morning. We need you, Lord. We know that we're on your heart this morning, and we thank you, Lord, for just continuing to touch us, Lord, and, and continuing to bless us this morning. Hallelujah. You may be seated in his presence. Hallelujah. 
and this part of the service, we all can take part in knowing that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask for or even think. As we continue to partner with God in our giving, just know that everything that you sow and everything that you receive into your hands, God blessed you to receive it. And he's going to take care of everything that you need. So don't be in anxiety about anything. God is going to take care of every need. Amen. In Matthew chapter 6, beginning with verse 26, and it reads, Consider the birds of the sky. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? Can any of you add one moment of this lifespan by worrying? Verse 28, and why do you worry about clothes? Observe how the wildflowers and the, of the field grow. They don't labor or spin thread, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown into the furnace on tomorrow, won't he do much more for you? You of little faith, so don't worry saying, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But as verse 33 states, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be provided for you today. So if we have first place in our hearts of who he is and how he can take care of us, that takes away every bit of anxiety. That takes away every bit of worrying. So when God has, has given you the resources to be a part of the kingdom building and the purposes of building the kingdom, just know that God will give you the power to obtain wealth and to establish his covenant. So if he has given you the power to obtain wealth, then God knows how to give it to you where you can sow it back into the kingdom and be instrumental in kingdom building. And when you sow your seeds and as you're preparing your seeds on this morning and your tithes this morning, just know that God is faithful to his word and he puts his word above his name. So just trust him with all of your heart and know that he will take care of every need that you have. Father, we thank you today. Father, we thank you because you are the great I am. You are an awesome God. You are a mighty God. Father, we thank you that as you sit high, you look low, you know what we have need of. For your yoke is easy and your burden is light for us. Father, we thank you that we're on your heart and that you love us and that your love is abounding towards us. And that, Father God, you're touching us right now and that you're helping us to, Father God, receive the power from you to obtain the wealth and to establish your covenant, God to give unto you as we continue to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all things shall be added unto us even without the asking. So we give you the honor and the praise for every millionaire that's being raised up in the house. Father God, every business owner that's being blessed in their businesses, that's going to sow exceedingly and abundantly. Father, we thank you because you've blessed them to obtain the wealth and to establish your covenant. Father, we thank you for kingdom building in this house, kingdom purposes, in your son Jesus' name, amen. Are you excited to be in church today? Are you excited? I'm so excited. You need to be excited about Jesus. You need to be excited. Come on, you need to be excited about the nation you live in. You're in a nice, comfy church today. You're not under a bomb shelter singing hymns. Come on. Amen. And I'm excited that Pastor Mary Sullivan is going to be bringing the word today. I want you to give it up, show your love, put your hands together, make some noise. Pastor Mary Sullivan. Good morning. Amen. Well, we're going to be talking today about choose joy. You know, you're to have a good time in church. You know, church is not just, or what we feel here, it's not just solemn. It's not, you know, joy 
of the Lord is your strength. And we're going to get into that. But, you know, I thought what a better way to kind of loosen up the crowd is I got some blonde jokes for you. I didn't realize that my son, Sydney didn't know what a blonde joke was. So I used these on him on the way to church. I said, I'm going to tell some jokes this morning. And so I told him, he's like, yeah. I said, well, you're blonde. You don't get them. <laughs> so here's a few, no offense to any blondes. I was an original blonde. Now I pay to be a blonde, so I'm not offended anymore. Two blondes fell down a hole. One said, it's dark in here, isn't it? The other replied, I don't know. I can't see. A blonde, a redhead, a brunette were all lost in the desert. They found a lamp and rubbed it. The genie popped out and granted them each one wish. The redhead wished to be back home. Poof, she was back home. The brunette wished to be home with her family. Poof, she went back home with her family. The blonde said, oh, I wish all my friends were here. This is my favorite one. Two blondes living in Oklahoma were sitting on a bench talking. One blonde said to the other, which do you think is further away, Florida or the moon? The other blonde turns and says, hello, can you see Florida? <laughs> thought those were good. Thank you, I've got more. No. <laughs> so it's good to laugh and have joy in church. Amen? Well, today we're talking about choose joy. In Romans 4, 17, it says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. This passage states that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. This means that God's kingdom is characterized by these virtues and that Christians and the church were to be distinguished by them. So our lives are characterized by righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. These traits not only strengthen our walk with God, but they are also our testimony and our witness to others. One of the topics that the Bible talks about is, you know, of everything it talks about in the Bible, one that it it doesn't talk about a lot or that is not preached about a lot is joy. You don't hear a lot about joy. It's not something that everybody talks about, but it should be. It gets, it gets overlooked. The lack of focus of joy can cause it to be one of the fruits of the Spirit that's not produced in our lives. That is a fruit of the Spirit. Sometimes we forget that. God wants us to have joy. You know, why do people, why would they want to come to church? Why would they want to serve God? What about you is making people want to serve God and come to church? You'll come to my church. It's a lot of fun. It's joy. People are attracted to joy. They're attracted to people. When you have a smile on your face, they're attracted to that. When you come to church, we want to be a place filled with joy to attract people. People are hurting. They need joy. You know, there are times in life we must intentionally rekindle the joy of the Lord. And the scripture states that the kingdom of God is joy in the Holy Spirit. It's not a human emotion of joy. You know, your human emotions are fleeting. They're up and down and all around. It's a supernatural joy that comes from the Spirit of God. Amen? When we're under the influence of the Holy Spirit, then we walk in the joy that originates from the Spirit. Joy that is born in the Spirit is more than just here today, gone tomorrow. It's solid. Amen. Certainly, as Christians, we understand the importance of love. The Bible talks about love. I grew up on the love scriptures, okay? I may have been more like Sydney, or Sydney is like me, as we preach about Sydney. I grew up on the love scriptures, so I, not a lo I know a lot about love. My mom didn't talk a lot about joy. <laughs> but Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love the, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. He also said the world will know 
will know you are my disciples by the love that you have for one another. And then the Apostle Paul explained in the New Testament, he said, now remains faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. It's been said that love is the great motivator. That's true. You know, love motivates you to do things for people. That's how you show people you love them. What do you do? I expect my husband to do things for me because he loves me. I do things for them because I love them, right? We do things for people that we love. Just as Jesus, he was motivated to die on the cross for us. Why? Because he loved us. Love is a motivator. If we say we love God and we love people, but we're never motivated, you're merely uttering words, and it doesn't mean anything. It's action to it. Love is the driving force that motivates us to action. So if we understand the value and the power of love, we know love is powerful, right? Then we have to understand the power of joy, and it, Jesus said in John 15, 11, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. So love, if love is the great motivator, then joy is the energizer. When joy, with joy comes a spirit of strength and energy. How, how do you act when you're happy? You got more pep in your step, right? You got a smile on your face. You have a song in your heart. You sing. It's shown on you. It, 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 it show. You can tell when somebody's happy, right? Y'all are a tough crowd today. I'm going to go back to some. You want another joke? <laughs> another blonde joke? This is a time for the restoration of joy. We need a restoration of that. Look around. Look what's going on. People are hurting. You're... Young people, which to me, I'm like, they, they don't even know what tough life is yet, <laughs> are dealing with depression on a greater level than they ever had. Suicide among young people is just on the rise. People are depressed. They need this. They need joy. Joy, amen? It's true. They need some joy in their life. Joy is to be glad and cheerful, to have a calm delight. You know, and I know it sounds nice. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, she can, you know, of course she has joy. Look at her. There's nothing going on in her life. Everything's great for her. That's how you have joy. Well, that's not true. A fruit of the Spirit is having joy even in adversity. Even when things aren't going right back here. Up here they are. Why? And why can you do that? Because we're not talking about a human emotion of joy. We're talking about a supernatural joy that comes from the Creator. Amen? Not joy by what's happening in front of me, but a fruit of the Spirit that I am developing. Joy is an attitude of the heart determined by the confidence in our God. Real, genuine joy is a byproduct of having a strong and intimate relationship with God. The more time you spend with God and the more intimate relationship you have with Him, He is joy. He is love. You can't help but have those things. So the more time that you're with Him and you're intimate with Him and the confidence that you have in Him, joy will radiate from you. Amen? Joy is one of the fruits of the spirits listed in Galatians 5. It says the joy can keep you in day-to-day trouble in the midst of a storm. It'll keep you in a storm. Cuz life isn't always <laughs> roses. I'd like to say it is, but it's not. It'll keep you in the midst of a storm. And that reason we need to guard it. The devil, he's a thief. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he will take anything that he can from you. So it's our job to guard our joy. It's the number one thing that Satan is after. He's after your joy. Why do you think that is? Because it affects your whole attitude. It affects how you see things. It affects what you do. It affects how you treat your family. It affects your witness to people. 
We're going to look at Nehemiah 8, 8 through 10. So they read distinctly from the book in the law of God, and they gave the sense and helped them to understand the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people, said to the people, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions for, to those from whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, we're, I'm going to break this down for you so we can have a better understanding about this. And I'm going to say it in Mary's terms so you'll understand it. <laughs> I like it when the Bible's broken down. How many of you heard? You've always heard the joy of the Lord is your strength, but you may not have known the context. That's why it's important to study the word so that you understand the context of it and, and, and the meaning behind it. So the Jews returned to uh, Babylon to rebuild the city of Jerusalem, and under Nehemiah's leadership, they built the walls when they returned to the city. So after the people had they completed building the walls, it was a season of renewal. So Ezra, the scribe, he began reading the Old Testament laws to them and, and bringing it back to their remembrance. So the people wept and mourned in conviction because they were like, we haven't been doing this. We haven't been living this way. We haven't been keeping the laws properly. Ezra stood and spoke to the people and he told them, do not weep but to celebrate and rejoice. They've been brought out. He reminded them not to sorrow, for that the joy of the Lord is their strength. So they come back in. They're safe inside the walls. They're hearing the word, the law that they have not been following. But you know what? That, that means that, okay, we haven't been doing that, but now you know what? Their hearts are turned they want to obey the laws and do the laws, and now they're upset because they haven't been doing them. But he says, hey, don't sweat it. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Don't you like that? Don't sweat it. It, convey, it conveys a powerful truth that our strength is found in the joy of the Lord. God has created us for joy, not sorrow. Now, the Hebrew word strength means a fortified place. I want you to get this. Listen, a defense or a stronghold. So the joy of the Lord is your strength because it is the thing that stands guard over you. Now, the joy of the Lord is a stronghold, meaning that God has appointed joy to be the protector of you. Now, here's the prophetic connection here. The statement, the joy of the Lord is your strength, it wasn't declared outside the walls. They waited till they got in the city and they built the walls around them. That was their protection. So they're in the walls and he says, hey, the joy of the Lord, where they're protected, the joy of the Lord is your strength. What is strength? It's a place of defense, a fortified place, a defense or a stronghold. So what is the Lord? He is your strong tower that you run to. So the joy of the Lord, when you hear the joy of the Lord is your strength, that's because you're in his, you're under his wings. You're in his, you're in his strong tower that you ran to. He's there to protect you. That way you can have joy. You can be rest in the joy of the Lord because he is protecting you. So now when you hear the joy of the Lord is my strength, Yes, he is. It's not just a cliche. There's safety in that. There's protection in that. It will keep you. Amen. The walls of the city was their stronghold and protection. It was once inside that God stated to them, he is their protector. Amen. If the devil can steal your joy, he can affect everything about you. He's, that's why he's after your joy. Because when you're, when you're depressed, when you're sad, when you don't have that joy, that's why he he's wants to steal it. 
because it affects how you think. It affects what you do, where you go, what you say. It can cripple you. Depression can cripple you. The opposite of joy would be depression. That's why you've got to protect it. And we've got to guard it at all costs to be effective. Amen? There's two things that the devil uses to steal our joy, people and circumstances. Jesus loves people. Amen. Don't we love people? Turn to your neighbor and say, I love you. If there's somebody here that you don't like, you need to find them and say, I love you too. No, I'm kidding. It's people, you know. God loves people. And sometimes you think, you know, you're, you have to deal with a situation or something. You're like, oh, God loves them. I know he does. <laughs> God loves people. We're called to love people. But people can affect you and people can steal your joy if you let them. You know, life is full of delays and people that just don't do right. You're never going to stop that from happening. You don't have control over how somebody else acts and what they say and what they do. You know, the key is how we handle it. Nobody can take your joy. You have control over it. So when you let a person come in and take your joy, you're just giving it to them. You're responsible for keeping it and protecting it. You can't control what people say and do. Can't control it. I can't control, you can't control what other people say and do. No one can take your joy. You control it. Some people are never happy because they're constantly giving their joy away. They're letting people steal it. They're constantly letting somebody take their joy. Their joy depends upon people and how people treat them and what people say to them. And they, they constantly need affirmation. Your affirmation comes from God. It doesn't come from other people. But letting what people say about you affect you. They wouldn't be talking about you if you weren't making a difference. You need to think about it that way. They talk about you. Why? Because you're doing something. You're going somewhere. You're going to be somebody. You're doing something for the kingdom. If you're not doing anything, why would, there wouldn't be anything interesting to talk about you. It's because you're going somewhere. So don't, don't let that affect you. You know, when we allow people to rob our joy and we're, looking, and we're listening to what they're saying and the chatter and the, what they have to say, well, you're not listening to what God said about you. You're being affected by what they said about you. Don't, don't focus on their criticism. My confidence comes from whose I am. Amen? That's where your confidence needs to come from, from who you are. And who God created you to be. Don't let them steal it from you. They'll rob your joy if they can. And sometimes people don't even mean to, but they will. They'll try to steal your joy. I'm telling you, avoid those people. No, I'm kidding. Don't let them steal your joy. Protect it. Unhappy, miserable people are joy killers. The second thing is circumstances. You know, all too often, our joy is based upon this moment and what's happening, what's going on around us. That's what we let determine how we feel. Not by what the Word says, not by what, what God's telling us, but we're, what's happening around us. You know, if things are good, hey, we're happy. You can tell. Sometimes you can tell there's people like that. When things are good and going great in their life, they are happy there on top of it. One little thing happens, and they're down here. <laughs> That's not the way we want to be. That means that your, your, fruit, one of those, your fruit of the Spirit's not developed. You need to develop that. The danger in allowing our circumstances to rob us is that it diminishes your faith in God. Because you're looking at the situation. You're not looking at what God is doing. You're not putting your trust in Him. You know, and things happen. Life's not always fair just happens. You can't control everything. (laughs) It just happens. You're just, you're here. So don't let that ruin your day. You know, Pastor Brad preached about being triggered. Things will trigger you. But you know, figure out what triggers you. 
And then that's what you need to work on, not letting it trigger you. It's okay, just like, you know, just like Ezra was telling the people, he's like, hey, hey, don't get upset. The joy of the Lord is your strength. When you find out something does trigger you, because I'm going to tell on pastor. So right after he preached that message, you know, and I love to preach his messages back to him. Now watch, I'm probably going to have a bad day tomorrow, and he'll be like, joy. <laughs> but after he preached that message, just something happened, and he was, he even said, okay, you know, I just preached about being triggered, and then here we go. <laughs> I was like, yep, there you go. You're being triggered. You need to but, you know, it seems like anytime you preach about it, that's when you're thinking, that's when it comes up. That's why he says he doesn't preach on patience. <laughs> Don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't be on a roller coaster. You know, too many times we, it's easy to come to church to hear the praise and worship. You know, when you get in God's presence, don't you love our praise, our worship team? Even when you've had a rush morning, you rush around, you come in here and you get, and they're singing and you, you know, and if Phyllis would just learn to sing, that's what I, but it's something about the anointing and being in God's presence and it just builds you up and you're like, yes, you, and then you hear a message and it just ministers to your heart and you're like, yes, I can do this. You walk out those doors and the weight of the world falls back on your shoulders. It, it happens. It's going to happen. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you it's not going to happen. That's why it's so important for us to develop our joy and to rely on the Lord to be our strength. The Bible teaches us that the just live by faith and that we are to walk by faith and not by sight. So it all works together. You see how it works together? You build your faith. You trust in the Lord you start developing your fruits of the Spirit, and then you can operate in the gifts of the Spirit. So in Psalms 30, 1 through 5, it says, I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up, and I have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you healed me. O Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. You have kept me alive, and I should not go down to the pit, but sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his. Oh, give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name, for his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for the night, but the joy comes in the morning. You have turned me, you have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put off my, sha my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness to the end of of my, to the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent, O Lord. I will give thanks to you forever. David was thanking and he was rejoicing in the Lord for bringing him out of a situation and out of some circumstances. Weeping may last for a season, but the joy comes in the morning. So it's important to remember that just because you're going through something, it's not uncommon. Everybody goes through something. Everybody has tests and trials, but it's all in how we choose to handle it, if not letting situations and circumstances and people take our joy. Sometimes the spirit of heaviness can get us and make us feel that we're the only ones going through it, but you're not. That's why a church family is important, too. That's why it's so important. I appreciate and I love we're doing our online, and I love online services, and I, you know, sometimes it'd be great to be laying on the couch in my pajamas watching church. But that's why you got to come together. It's important to come together because we're building each other up and we're strengthening each other. Amen. Nothing that we experience is uncommon to men. What is uncommon is the joy that comes from the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of you. Amen. <laughs> Most of the conflict that we engage in is just a distraction. We get distracted. You know, we're, we're real easily distracted. Things happen. We're like, oh, over here, over here. But you know what? We're just supposed to be looking straight ahead and following God. Amen? Our job is to run the race that he set before us. 
Look, you know, I was thinking about Joseph, and you know, sometimes things happen when pastor was just preaching about him. So, but you've got to realize that, because people say, well, why would God let these things happen to me? Well, look at Joseph, though. These things happened to him, but, and he was put in different situations and different circumstances at times. But if those didn't have, he had to go through those things to end up where he ended up. So sometimes you're going to go through some difficult things. And it's not that, and I don't believe that I'm not one of those that say, hey, God caused that to happen. But things happen in life. And you have to go through some of these things. And it's all in how you handle it. And each step that you take and that you go through. Because if Joseph hadn't gone through all of those and he had went straight to you know, the end, that's why you go through these things. Because one, you grow and you develop. But it gives you an opportunity to rely on the Lord. And you grow and you develop your fruits of the Spirit. Amen? We must get freed from people and circumstances in order to let our joy take control. You got to get free from that. We began our message this morning talking about the kingdom of God is joy in the Holy Spirit. So without joy, we're not properly able to function in the kingdom of God. Without joy, you don't produce a healthy fruit, your healthy fruits of the Spirit. That is a fruit of the Spirit. Do we need to go, we need our little felt board. Don't you remember that when you were a little kid? A little felt bolt and the fruits of the spirit. I had a friend of mine tell me once her mom, she didn't agree with Halloween, so she let her dress up as one of the fruits of the spirit. That's just a side note for you. <laughs> Without joy, we're not able to, to produce a full and healthy crop of the fruits of the spirit, which prevent us from operating in the gifts of the spirit. They go hand in hand. You develop your fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace. Then you're able to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. That's what God has planned for you. He wants you to do these things. Joy is the passion fruit or the fertilizer, you could call it, for your fruits to flourish. Galatians 5.22, the gifts of the Spirit, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, amen, against there is such there is no law. And now the gifts of the Spirit, it says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. There's a direct link between the fruits of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. We cannot function in one without producing the other. Amen? When joy of the Lord stand guard over us, the environment is created, and the fruits of the Spirit can flow from you. And you can operate in those, and you need those. Amen? It's important for us to learn how to sustain our joy of the Lord. So I'm going to give you eight things. I know it sounds like a lot, but it's not. I'll go quick. Number one is stay in the Word. God's Word reminds you what God says about you rather than what people say about you. Stay in the Word. You're weak if you do not stay in the Word. And what do I mean by staying in the Word? I want to break it down for you. I mean you got to read the Word. You've got to study the Word. you got to listen to the Word. Okay, if you don't like to read, we have... We have on our church app, if you open it up, we have the Bible app on there. You can listen to the Word of God. That's for my husband right there. Number two, develop a habit of praise. Praise directs your focus from your circumstances and places it on God. 
Psalms 31, 4 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. When you're praising God, you're not looking at you. You're looking at God. You're not looking at your circumstances. You're not thinking about what they said about me. You're looking at God. You're looking at the creator of the universe who created you to do great things for him. Develop a habit of praise. Number three, pray. Pray. You got to pray. We must spend time praying, not only in our known tongue, but also in the tongues of the Spirit. Jude 20 says, build yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. You need to pray. You need to spend time praying. You got to study. You got to pray. You got to pray in the Holy Spirit. The joy, it will stir up something on the inside of you. And, you know, sometimes you can get, you can go through something and you don't even know what to say. Maybe you're so upset, it shook you to your core. I'm not saying people don't deal with things. There are things that happen. I know I'm laughing and having joy, but sometimes you go through circumstances that shake you to your core. When you pray in the Holy Spirit, it will change your atmosphere. It will change you. Maybe there's, you're not even sure what else to do. That is why you have the Holy Spirit, so that you can pray and you can stir up the gifts that are inside you. Amen. Find something in your life that is a source of joy. What brings you joy? Find something that makes you happy. You know, it doesn't always, everything doesn't have to be over super spiritualized. You know something that makes me happy? My kids, for the most part. (laughs) What really makes me happy is little Sydney. He is a sweet little thing. Now, I know we, we tell you the other side, too, but he really is sweet. He loves, there's some mornings that I don't have to get around as early, He loves to come and lay on the couch with me if I drink a cup of coffee. And I mean, that just does my heart good. He'll tell me, he's like, now he watches his iPad. He's not talking to me. (laughs) Don't get crazy. But he just wants to be with me. And, you know, it brings joy to me. He told me the other night, I woke him up one morning and I said, get up. Come on, you want to come sit on the couch with me? He goes, you know, I prayed last night that you would wake me up this morning so I could be with you. I said, what you want, baby? I'll buy you anything you want. You're the sweetest, you're the sweetest in the house. He knows what he's doing. But he's, it's a source of joy. Find, find anything. What brings you joy? Maybe you like to like f- watch funny movies. You know, our family loves to laugh. We love to laugh and have a good time. We like to watch funny shows. We went on vacation a few years ago, and we were listening to the comedy channel, (laughs) one of them on XM, laughing. Do you know what joy that brings to me to hear my kids just laughing and having a good time? They're not mad because they got to be with us. They're laughing. They're having fun. Find something that brings joy. Spend Spend your time doing something you enjoy. What do you enjoy doing? I encourage you to find stuff with your family that brings joy to them. Number six, be productive. Unproductive people are unhappy people. Our hands and our minds were meant by God for productivity. Don't be lazy. Don't be unproductive. That can make you depressed. Be productive. Put your hand to something. Do something. Number seven, associate with people who celebrate you, not tolerate you. You will be richer. (laughs) Your life will be richer if you take joy in the people that love you and that you love back. Surround yourself with people like that. That doesn't mean that you don't go, that you don't minister to people. But you need to be with people that love you and celebrate you. Number eight, receive the anointing of the Lord. 
In Psalm 16, 11, it says, In your presence is fullness of joy. Isaiah 61 says, the spirit, of the, Lord, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of the joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Amen. Joy is an attitude of the heart determined by your confidence in God. The joy of the Lord. Say that. Say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. We got to develop that. It's a fruit of the Spirit. Don't let it, a lot of us work just on love. Work on your joy. Because when you have joy, it'll be easier to love people too. Amen. <laughs> well, let's stand. I've only gone a little over my time. I want to get points discounted for Sullivan. Well, maybe you need some joy today. I want you just to lift your hands. I'm not even giving you an option. Lift your hands. Amen. Father God, we just, mm, we praise you today. We ask for a restoration of our joy. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, Father God, but you came to give us life and life more abundantly. And I thank you for joy that is being restored today. Joy that the devil, situations, circumstances that have come and tried to steal our joy. Help us to lay those things aside, Father. Let our focus be on you, Lord. Our confidence is in you, Father. And our joy, your joy, Father God, is our strength supernatural joy, not fleeting, not roller coaster, but your supernatural joy is on the inside of us. We thank you for it, Father God, that you're giving us the joy to be able to run our race that's set before us so we can be impactful, Father God to the world around us. It's about people, Father. We thank you as we spend time with you and our joy is growing. We're working on that fruit of the Spirit, Father, that we're able to, people are able to see something about us. They're able to see your joy upon us. And Father, I ask that you send people across our paths that are in desperate need of joy, in desperate need of you, Father God, that we may make an impact for the kingdom and show your love and your joy is upon us. We choose joy today. Say, I choose joy. In Jesus' name, amen. When you leave, something comes up, say, you know what? I choose joy. Talk to yourself. I choose joy. I'm working on the joy that the Lord has given me. Amen. Well, we're going to get ready to dismiss here, but I want to ask, give you an opportunity. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we never want to end our services without giving you an opportunity. Or if you're online and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we want to pray with you. And I want everybody to pray with us. I think it's good to, to pray it because one, you know what, if you're not, you may say, I'm, I don't need to pray that. It's good to repeat it. And then it'll help you when you have an opportunity to lead somebody to the Lord. You'd be like, oh, you know what? Yeah, I remember how to do that. Mm-hmm. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I'm asking you to come into my life and come into my heart. 
Wash me clean, Father. Make me new. I want your abundant life living on the inside of me. Thank you for loving me. You love me so much that you sent your son to die for me, that I may live. I make you the Lord of my life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you're here and you prayed that for the first time, you can come up and talk with them. Or if you want to connect with us online, then mark that you did pray that for the first time. We want to, we want to minister to you. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to have joy today. We pray you were blessed by the worship and ministry of our surge experience today. It is our desire to see people experience a surge of God's power and grace that will empower them to live life beyond their limits. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for sharing the ministry of Surge Church with your friends and family and on social media. We love you and cannot wait to see you soon.